Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start, but now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Fast Western made booking our family beach vacation a breeze. And it felt a little like... Life's a trip. Make the most of it at Best Western. Lost and Found. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. On January 31st, 1993, a mother and daughter arrived home after a weekend in Dallas to discover that their husband and father, David Glenn Lewis, was missing. Where David was and how he was found would span thousands of miles and would take almost 11 years to solve. This is the strange case of David Glenn Lewis. On that same day, David Glenn Lewis left work early at his law firm, stating he was not feeling well and would be heading home. Records indicate that he bought gas, and then he taught his college class that evening until 10 p.m., When they returned on January 31st at 11.15 p.m., they discovered David was absent. His car was gone. However, his wedding ring and watch were left on the kitchen counter. The VCR was still recording the Super Bowl. There were freshly made sandwiches in the fridge. Since there were no signs of foul play, David's wife assumed he may have worked late or watched the game elsewhere. She filed a missing persons report the next day. What no one knew is that 1,600 miles away, In Yakima County, Washington, several people spotted an individual on Route 24 near Moxie wandering on the road. Just as quickly as he was seen, he was dead. Police arrived to find the body of a middle-aged man dressed in military-style clothing and work boots. Hmm. During the examination, there were no traces of alcohol or drugs. Investigators suspected he was the victim of an accidental hit and run. He had no identification on him, and his identity remained unknown. On the 2nd of February... The day after John Doe was discovered, the investigation into David Glenn Lewis's disappearance in Amarillo intensified when investigators located David's car. The red Ford Explorer was found parked outside the Potter County Courts building downtown. Beneath the floor mat, police discovered David's house and car keys. His checkbook, credit cards, and driver's license were found in the car as well. But according to his wife, that was typical. He would leave things in his glove compartment. Hmm. The things under the floor mats, different story. David's wedding ring and watch were found in his home. Despite the recovery of these items, the discovery of David's car and belongings did not provide any significant answers. Mm -hmm. Beside the fact that it's all very strange. Yes, yes, yes. The investigation did uncover an intriguing detail. Prior to his death, David had confided in his wife about feeling threatened, but refused to divulge any specifics. Mm, That's interesting. David was scheduled to travel to Dallas a week after he vanished for a deposition in a conflict of interest case involving his former law firm and a wealthy client. Oh. He had assured his father that he would not cover up any wrongdoing from his former firm and planned to, quote, tell the truth, whoever it hurts. Oh, shit. So he was at okay. odds with his former law firm. So did he think, yeah, his, his former law firm was maybe putting something out on him? Maybe he left his 
ring and watch and got into some army clothes. He kind of thought he was defending himself, kind of fugued out maybe. The first ticket bought on the 31st was from a flight to Dallas to Amarillo, the same route David's wife and daughter took on the day they returned home to find him missing. The second ticket purchased on the next day, on the 1st of February, was for a flight from LAX to Dallas, the same day John Doe's body was found in Washington. The purpose of these tickets remains a mystery, and it's unclear if they were used at this point, which it was pre-9-11. Flying was easy. Technology was a little bit different. Yeah. I still think, did this person get on a flight? Did they cash in this ticket? Yeah. But I guess they're also, at that point, John Doe's John Doe, Mm -hmm. and David is just a missing. missing person. Yeah. And also, this is happening, these two cases are happening simultaneously, but like a very far amount of miles oh, apart, you know? You, you would not make a like, connection. why would you ever make a connection? Did David intend to use them? If so, how did he travel from Amarillo to Dallas, a five-hour drive away? Did he plan to return from Washington to Texas by using LAX as a stopover? And if so, why did he go to Washington in the first place? No one knows mm-hmm. any of this mm-hmm. stuff. These tickets, a- anything that's happened with him, nobody knows it's, it just looked like he's like oh i'm taping the super bowl i just made some sandwiches oops i gotta go yeah. out for a second that's what it yeah. looks like i mean it really reminds me of the unsolved mysteries uh reboot episode one where it's like in the middle of there's all these strange things that don't quite connect but you know like something bigger is going on but you don't quite know what that is Despite no new leads emerging, the criminal investigation into David's disappearance was officially closed after 11 months. Wow. We fast forward to 2002 after this break. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs done well. If you own a home, you know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start, but now... All you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience, and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly which means you can take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. Elevate every morning with Tommy John's Second Skin Underwear. The luxurious support of Second Skin guarantees everything will go smoothly. With over 20 million pairs sold and thousands of five-star reviews, guys love Tommy John. Plus, your most valuable assets are covered with Tommy John's best pair you'll ever wear or its free guarantee. Get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash Spotify. Save 20% at TommyJohn.com slash Spotify. See site for details. Hi, hello, how are you? How are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. We call this the check-in. Fancy seeing you here. Your parents and grandparents probably call it something different. Yeah. But we call it a check-in. Yeah, check-in. That's right. We call it just the casual just check-in. Just check-in. Just yeah. us, just your cool friends check Yeah, young. In. So yep. young. Yeah. Very young this is friends. This we do. Yeah, this is how. Vaping in the corner. <laughs> yeah. Talking about, um, I don't know, cool music. I, it's like, I, got, I, got, I got my Post iPhone. Malone. We want to thank anyone who's listening, supporting us, spreading the good word of Ghost Town. We thank mm. you every single week and we'll mm. never, ever stop. We won't stop. We're, th- we're full of thanks and mm-hmm. we will never run out of thanks. Even if you don't want it and hate it. Yeah. It we'll stop. run out of a lot, by the yeah. way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. And just like Post Malone, we love to thank our government. Mm-hmm. That's so Post Malone of us. Oh, it's true. We got a couple of mayors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We got a couple of mayors that love the newest modernist thing. Mm. They love it. And they throw it right in your face. So they got the newest, Modern. hottest thing. Walking into the party with a fidget spinner. Just <laughs> spinning it round and round Whoa. and round. Like, look what I got. Ooh, who's that guy? <laughs> that mayor is Emma Hopkins. Hello. Just cruising on in. With a two-liter crystal Pepsi. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I see. No alcohol for me, thanks. I no. got crystal Pepsi. They're like, meth? No. 
Pep- no. It's not a joke. They're I not- intend to chug this later. Yeah, it's not. I'm not being funny with drugs. Yeah, no, this it's is my lifestyle. Crystal Pepsi. Mm-hmm. That's Casey Weber. Hello. Just cruising on in the party with a compact disc titled "Now That's What I Call Music Volume Two. Two? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're like the first one was so good. The second one's got to be relic. pretty good. God, they're on like. They're 50s now. Yeah, it's like you want to listen to probably Usher, maybe, maybe uh, O-Town. <laughs> yeah, O-Town's big. Um, what, that Sex and Candy song? I think it's on every one of those. Oh, <laughs> Marcy's Mar- Playground. Marcy's Playground. It's yeah, all on there. They know. They know because they listen to it. You can thank DJ Matthew Clemens LeRae for that. <laughs> Hello. Cruising on in. With a Swatch watch. What time is it? Whoa. Check out my Swatch watch. Oh, I hope it's like one of those like splatter painted ones. Yeah. I it's like got that. the it's got the protective Oh the, the, yeah, the, the, the like protective the, cover you had on the swatch. It's like you think a I bumper. You, Does you it watch the bumpers? Like and stuff like like no, they're not the pioneers of having protective stuff. Swatches, because mm-hmm. you are a high intensity, high impact person, and you need a watch to fit your life. What time is it? Well, you can ask Marissa Rothermill. Hello cruising on in just rocking a text on a sidekick nice flipping it up and side kicking it yeah you flip it up you do the little tiny button yeah and flip it back down down and you're like Put what were you saying uh-huh and they're like is that bedazzled <laughs> and you're like yeah it's a special occasion yeah and you know it's and you know it's bedazzled with mm. the name kelly mean hello cruising on in sun's in her eyes so she's rocking a hat Sweet Von Dutch hat. Ooh. Check out my Von Dutch. Nice, nice. You got the like the kind of like breathable webbing on. Yeah, it the on brand the is all worked. It's just it's it just fits worked at, like like a glove, but it's uh-huh. a hat. It's frayed. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> it's frayed, but it was purchased that way, of course. Yeah, you didn't do that. It, it's it, you know you but your lifestyle does kind mm-hmm. of it, it coincides. It lends itself to your brand. That's Cat Giselle. Hello. Cruising on in with a DVD box set of wow. Roswell. <laughs> Jesus. Does everyone want to watch how many seasons of three seasons of Roswell? I'll say three. Does that sound right? Uh, I, two I to don't four. Know. Yeah, two to four for sure. Listen, aliens are back, baby. Let's watch some Roswell. Let's exactly. Ros it up. Who's Let's got go- a DVD player? Yeah. High res. Yeah. High def. Yeah. <laughs> With, there's also the um, director's commentary. <laughs> nice. Oh, Some cast stops. commentaries. Whose birthday is it? What a treat. Well, who made this party rock? <laughs> alien style? It's hot, hot aliens, I guess they are. Yeah. Is that what they are? They're hot aliens? I don't What's know. Roswell? They're all just a bunch of... Every CW show of that era is just a bunch of white people in a row looking up. Yeah, yeah. They're all... <laughs> They have no powers, right? They're just I don't know. either aliens or talking to aliens or they're hooking up with aliens. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. They're pale. You can just ask Ashley Matson for that one. Hello. And our governor just flying in. Huh. American Airlines? I don't think so. Delta? No thanks. Brought back TWA. Just cruising Whoa. in on that Resurrected collect- a whole fucking airline, airline. That was gone for, for many long years. time. She's like, you want to see retro? Yeah, I literally recreated and rehired <laughs> all the old TWA people yeah. to work on my new TWA. They're like, airlines. I'm 91. She's like, get She's to like, work. Exactly. She's when like, I purchased the airline, I purchased you. You don't know the agreement you signed when you signed up with TWA. <laughs> So you got Impressive. you got like a, you got a ninety five year old fly in the plane. I mean, the youngest person is seventy seven. Just <laughs> it's truly very impressive. And, and the plane crashes right into the party that everyone's at. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> old people careen, careening out of the TWA yeah, plane. Yeah, they're fine. By the way, it's a party for the fucking they're fine. century. They're like, I'm gonna need a chug of that Crystal Pepsi. That's our governor. Avian, Avian Noble. Noble. If you want no ads, no chit chat, bonus episodes, seven days free. You want to listen just the good stuff? Come on over. Patreon.com slash ghost town pod. Now, we got a mystery. That's right. That's right. Let's get back into it. In 2002, police informed local media that the plane tickets purchased in David's name led them to believe he left home voluntarily. I don't know how you can't follow up on this if there's no way to confirm did a human being check in with the tickets. Or, or, or are they just like, oh, this is just somebody who just wanted to skip out in his family and yeah. leave all his stuff? In 2003, 10 years after John Doe's body was found in Washington, Detective Pat Ditter 
read a newspaper series entitled Without a Trace about missing person cases. In the series, he read about the flaws in missing persons investigations. And of course, as time has gone by, things mm-hmm. have advanced. And flaws in the NCICs, which is the National Crime Information Center's computer system at the time, inspired by the thought that possible identities for unidentified victims have, may have fallen through the cracks of computer databases. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure this is probably something that's been ongoing. Yeah. Probably the most refined it is right now. But technology at that time was starting to evolve. Mm-hmm. Within a week, there was a breakthrough. A list of potential victims who roughly matched the description of the Yakima County John Doe. One in particular, a Doe network entry for David Glenn Lewis, complete with picture, caught Ditter's eye. The picture of David was similar to the one of Ditter, though he was put off by the lack of glasses, which were, I think, initially not found near the body. Mm. I guess a Clark Kent Superman thing. It's like, he wears glasses. Glasses come off. Again, it's probably more nuanced than what I'm, I'm explaining, but... Yeah, well, it's also like it might be a convenient way for law enforcement to not do their job. Yeah, until Ditter discovered that a pair of glasses had been found. Oh, okay, great. Ditter went to access the personal effects. He's found the glasses wrapped up in the military-style clothing he had been wearing when he was killed, which I understand that is kind of a thrown-off thing. You think it's like, oh, this person's like a hunter or mm-hmm. whatever. Definitely not... David's normal look. He's a look. professor. Yeah. He's, He's a lawyer a, yeah, and a professor. professor yeah. yeah, that seems, again, out of the ordinary. Now believing the connection between John Doe and David Glenn Lewis may be more than a coincidence. Ditter got into contact with Amarillo police, sent them the items that could be used for DNA analysis, one of the boots the victim had been wearing, and a tissue sample preserved since 1993. David's mother, Esther, provided her own DNA sample to test against the unidentified man. In October 2004, 11 years after he went missing, David Glenn Lewis was positively identified as the deceased man found on Route 24, 1,600 miles from home. Wow. It is unknown why David would have headed to Washington, and no one has been able to offer any insight into a connection, what had happened, and why he left the area. As far as what happened is drivers saw him just wandering in the middle of the road, and some people, you know, that are from the area go, it's presented in a way that it's just this kind of country road, but it's not. It's a yeah. high trafficked area. Mm-hmm. So you just have a man dressed up in military fatigues and work boots wandering in the middle of the road. People, somebody drove by him and they went to pull over to be like, hey, there's a guy in the road. And by that point, he already got hit by a car, a Camaro that was considered a hit and run. Some people say that, oh, was that somebody out to to murder him yeah so this idea that some people and we talked about the um unsolved mysteries where everyone's like the conspiracy the conspiracy Mm -hmm, the conspiracy mm -hmm. and maybe we don't know other people consider is of you said a fugue state mental illness yeah what i've gathered in everything that i've looked at there's a lot of like information but not a lot of information Mm -hmm. is that it sounds like somebody that may have been paranoid Mm -hmm. about something and then did things to i'm gonna buy a plane ticket here i'm gonna buy a plane ticket there i'm gonna leave this here i'm gonna leave that there in a constant state of throwing people off my scent Mm. for what reason maybe some maybe absolutely none i'm sure if you talk to people that knew him maybe everyone would say this is really totally out of the ordinary or would somebody say he's been getting more and more paranoid over time pretty young you know he's a young person 40 he was still functional. You know, he was still teaching and practicing. At the same time, along with like unsolved mysteries, it's like, yeah, like I was still working too. Is it the sort of thing where he thought he was being watched or he had like a bag packed next to him where it's like he at, at a certain point, if he gets some kind of like feeling that something's happening, he grabs his bag with his fatigues in them. He's got his plane tickets. He goes and, you know, he he has to do something for this like kind of paranoid fueled kind of escape or, you know, clearing of his name or trying to figure something out something like that let's just say you know somebody is out to get you Mm -hmm. and that is absolutely happening we'll just say we'll know that's that's the truth Mm -hmm. what is the impetus to go and be like i'm going to just walk in the middle of a highway what gets you to that point like what gets you is like i need to walk in the center of a road Mm -hmm. a busy road I don't know what that is. Are you mm-hmm. running from something? Because he wasn't like flagging down cars and going, hey, listen, I'm yeah. being chased. Was he paranoid where he's like, I got to go and I got to change my look. I got to mm-hmm. wear fatigues to blend in with. The- this is mm-hmm. things that I'm just surmising 
and I have really no basis on it except like if you had to ask, what does it sound like? Yeah. Also, people found it very interesting that his wife was gone to go shopping that weekend with their young daughter. It's like, Mm -hmm. is that maybe it's, you know, let's think it's like, hey, listen, you're going to watch the Super Bowl here. Um, We're going to go. You don't know anything about the relationship. She she could be like, yeah, I'm just going. He's like, I'm going to stay here and I got work. Or is it a thing like I need to get out of this house? You're like freaking me out. Some people say, what a coincidence. I don't know how she orchestrated a human being to be 1,600 miles away wandering mm-hmm. in the middle of a road. Yeah, that doesn't feel like, like a domestic conflict to no, me. No, it sounds like – and, you know, the only indication I've seen, there's, maybe there's more, this probably is more, is that – I don't know if he just said once, he's like, I think I'm in danger. And she's like, I, 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 I got to imagine that's – if that's one thing – what else is true? Mm. Probably a lot of other things are probably true in that, but no one knows. It's always a thing like maybe if a little more police work was done. I know. I, I keep how, how do you not know sh- if you want to know, like, did that celebrity get on a plane? You would have found out. Totally. Totally. And we are also talking about two very separate jurisdictions mm. at a very specific period in time, which I was also thinking too, you know, CODIS was probably just being created at this point. So it's like, you're not going to be, you know, it's gonna be a cold case for a while. But the idea of like, there's a missing guy, you probably can get his fingerprints off of something, you probably get the fingerprints off this dead guy and probably match them pretty quickly. Like without that, like, kind of like high technology, you know, you just, you need different departments communicating with each other. And how would you from like, Texas, right to like Seattle? Mm, Yeah, you know, like, that's like, kind of a that's a long ways journey for sure. But with better detective work, you could have maybe put together the fact that like there was a plane ticket purchase that like, you know, going there via LAX. I think there's ways that you could have helped kind of create. Better well, they webs. knew the plane. It just got, it'd be like, Hey, who worked here on this day? Did this person mm-hmm. look at the photo of this person? Do you remember if this person got on the plane? Did, was a ticket, was this ticket checked in? I'm sure airlines keep track of that because they want to make you know fill seats and make money and that's mm-hmm. their business they'd be like we don't know who comes on the plane or who leaves well, I, I, what do they just i you know what i mean there there is it's the early 90s it's not like the first airplane yeah the first commercial no, exactly. air flight well he had no transportation as you know when he was in washington so he must have been on foot for a, a while i don't know how far away it makes me think when he left his car at the courthouse that mm-hmm. it's oh where we got to find David Glenn Lewis. Oh, his car is at the... He must be around here. I feel like things are, are done to, like, leave smoke screens, these mm-hmm. little smoke screens, which in a way kind of worked. <laughs> yeah, no, it, obviously, you know, like, because we, we still don't know what has happened. But I do wonder if it's something with his boss. Again, like Unsolved Mysteries, keep going back to that, where something, like, what is the connection between these two places? Like, starting with the places mm-hmm. and how kind of reverse engineering like what their relationship could be or maybe it's something maybe it's random and this guy fucking had a psychotic break and left his sandwiches in the fridge and the recording of the super bowl and randomly got to where he was and was if like a, a phone kill. call came in like something that had to interrupt that um, again unless he's everything's a smoke screen he's yeah. like super bowl i'm gonna have to, this is gonna be recording mm-hmm. and then i'm gonna have the sandwiches in even the way we're telling this, is it the, the whole thing like a smoke screen that he always, ha- yeah. always had? Or is it just something that was like, this interrupted my world? But that feels very logical yeah. and kind of premeditated and very planned and very intelligent versus like having the end of this person's journey be being hit by a car on a busy freeway. Yeah. Like What makes most sense to me is is paranoia. Yeah. An extreme form of paranoia. We talk about these things. You don't always hear Mm -hmm. like, wow, that sounds really odd, assuming that you know that this person's life, they would have never, ever done any of this. And Mm -hmm. there's never been an indication of it until right this second. Yeah. Or is it sort of a long time coming? Yeah. Um, Yeah, I think – better police work they mm-hmm. talked to his wife but who else did they talk to who his doctor you know like mm. his students like what was it like being in a class with this person why you know, did he leave work clients. early like yeah. did, what has it been like has he been leaving work early a lot um yeah i, I we need more information and I, I can only assume that like a lot of these questions are because the police didn't do a great job i don't know what the staffing is like and they're like oh we have to prioritize things or we don't we just want to close cases but certainly incredibly interesting and the details like like all of these cases, we talk about a lot of missing persons cases, mysterious circumstances. These details are what stick with you around it, and they make it really compelling.
Grand Canyon University makes earning your degree possible with over 130 academic programs for traditional campus students with more than 80 bachelor's programs offered online. GCU provides you with the personal support you need from complimentary unofficial transcript evaluations within 24 business hours to scholarships, academic support, and your GCU graduation team led by your own university counselor. Find your purpose at GCU. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu.